This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. Thanks for joining us here at 6 o'clock. I'm Nicole Griffin. An Indianapolis family is grieving tonight, dealing with the death of a loved one who was shot earlier today. Officers were called to a neighborhood near 52nd Street and Georgetown Road just before 2 o'clock on reports of a shooting. RTV6's Cornelius Hawker is live tonight with what we know right now and an important message from police. Cornelius. Yeah, Nicole, tonight homicide detectives with IMPD are working on this case. And we know a woman was shot and taken to a hospital here in the area. And that's where police say she died. We also know there was a child in the home whenever this shooting happened. And that kid was taken to a hospital as well to be treated for injuries. But police did not say if the child had also been shot. And while police haven't said this was an accidental shooting or something else, they do want to remind people. If you're going to have guns in your home, you need to make sure they are stored and kept responsibly. I can tell you if you have guns in your house, you certainly want to keep them locked, secured, away from children. There are lock boxes and lockers you can keep your guns in. The officer here also says the Marion County Sheriff's Office gives out free trigger locks. You can pick those up from them or go to any library here in our city to get those as well. Whenever we have an update on this case, including the name of the woman who passed away, we'll pass it along to you on the RTV6 News app. Live tonight, working for you. I'm Cornelius Hawker for RTV6. All right, you can see Cornelius had his hood up as more rain showers are making their way back into central Indiana. It was a very wet start to our day, then kind of a lull in the precipitation throughout the middle half of the day. And now the rain is moving back in with the heaviest of the shower activity from Indianapolis still to the south. And there is a lot of rainfall that is going to be heading our way over the course of the next 12 hours. As they expand out, you can see this heavy batch of rain now moving into southern Illinois. And all of this is going to stream from southwest to northeast throughout the state of of Indiana over the next 12 hours with the back edge of it still all the way in portions of Missouri. So if you're going to be out late tonight or throughout the overnight hours, just know that there could be some uh, ponding on the roadways and we've seen a lot of rain and the snow melt over the past week or so. And so the ground is completely saturated. Now the good news is the temperatures are still nice and mild across the area. 56 in Indy, we're in the 60s earlier in the day today, 56 in Bloomington, still holding on to 60 degrees currently in Muncie. So it remains mild overnight. So as this rain comes through, it's all rain. You don't have to worry about any mixing throughout the overnight hours, but as we push into the 11 o'clock hour, this is probably when the heaviest of the rainfall is making its way through. The area continues after midnight, and then the bulk of the steady precipitation will be out of here by the time we get to the morning commute. Here we are at 4 o'clock. You notice temperatures are in the 40s and 50s, but by the time we get to 8, 9 o'clock in the morning, as the colder air comes in, we're starting to mix in some snow showers here across the area. We'll talk more about that and look ahead to your New Year's Eve forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Todd, thank you. 12 people are homeless tonight after a fire early this morning on the east side. The fire began just after 5 a.m. in a vacant two-story house near Tenth and Keystone. Flames spread to two other buildings that were occupied. Nine people live in one of the buildings, three people in the other. None of the 12 people suffered injuries. IFD says the residents reported seeing squatters inside and outside of the vacant house. The cause of the fire is under investigation. IFD is working with Red Cross to find shelter for the people who lost their homes. A woman is dead, her husband in serious condition after a crash this morning on Interstate 70 near Cloverdale. State police say a Tesla crashed into the back of a fire truck that was responding to an earlier crash. A young married couple from Arizona were in the Tesla. They had to be pulled from the wreckage. 23-year-old Jenna Monet died at the scene or died at the hospital rather. Her husband, 25-year-old Derek Monet, remains hospitalized tonight. Tomorrow, we'll learn who will be the next man or woman to lead the Beach Grove Police Department. The mayor says he will make the announcement at 10 o'clock Monday morning. Earlier this month, we learned Chief Mark Swartz is retiring at the start of the new year after serving eight years as chief. And he's not the only Tom Cop stepping down. Last month, IAPD Chief Brian Roach announced he will also retire at the start of the new year. Mayor Joe Hogg said appointed Roach chief in January of 2017. In just over three weeks ago, Muncie Police Chief Joe Winkle announced he will leave the department on December 30th. Shortly after that, the mayor-elect announced Nathan Sloan will take over as chief on January 1st. 
Tonight, a local group is answering a call to action to help animals in need. On Sundays, Gwen Keller Lusk, who lives in Fishers, holds Sunday Crafter Noon with Gwen. And while this may look like a lot of fun, every person who attends is helping out a good cause. Each month, they decide on a local organization to help, and this month, it's the Humane Society of Hamilton County. Today, they collected everyday items the shelter needs, like dog food, laundry detergent, and treats. They also collected monetary donations that will now be donated to the Humane Society. I do this because I saw that there is a need for it and um, there's a lot of great local organizations that just need a little help and um, this is just my way of giving back. Part of the reason Gwen chose the Humane Society of Hamilton County this month is because she supports rescues and has adopted her dogs from local rescues, but also because the, Humane, the Hamilton County Humane Society has an urgent need for funding for a new location. Right now, they are about at 80% of their goal for a new shelter at 106th and Hague Road and need help. Construction is expected to start in March. IPS officials are encouraging more families to participate in the district's meal services during breaks. Free breakfast and lunch will be offered at more than a dozen sites tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday. The program is not just for IPS students. Any child under 18 can get a meal. You can find a full list of meal sites right now on the RTV6 app. With just days left in 2019, an organization that helps families all across the state by providing life-changing programs needs your help. We've reported this month donations to the Salvation Army's Red Kettle campaign were down this year. At last check, they are about $100,000 behind where they were at the same time last year. Part of that is because there was less time to donate with Black Friday following almost a week later this year. And while the Red Kettle campaign is over, the Salvation Army is hopeful that they can still meet their $3 million goal with charitable donations made in the last week of the year. Your money goes to help provide summer camp for low-income kids in the Pathway of Hope program, which helps families break the cycle of poverty. It also helps adults seeking treatment or families who need emergency assistance, programs that local families depend on. We don't want people to be denied any service. We want to help as many people as possible, but we need the support of the community during this time to give to us financially. And you don't, Salvation Army is not always out year round all the time saying we need, we need. So when we say as an organization, we need your help, we need your help. There are several ways you can donate. You can simply visit a local Salvation Army location, mail in a check, or visit the Ways to Give page on the Salvation Army's website. We put all the details on the RTV6 app and the IndyChannel.com. A gathering place to celebrate peace and goodwill shattered by a violent attack. Sadly, this is not an isolated incident in one community. We'll have the latest. Also ahead, a church under attack, but this time some brave members of the congregation fight back. Todd. And after a bit of a break from the rainfall throughout the daytime hours today, more heavy rain is on the way for this evening and overnight. Some flooding's possible. We'll talk about that and look ahead to your Monday morning commute coming up in just a few minutes. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. The U.S. says it has carried out military strikes in Iraq and Syria, targeting a militia blamed for an attack that killed an American contractor. Defense officials say U.S. forces conducted precision defensive strikes against five sites of Khatib Hezbollah. The U.S. blames the militia for a rocket barrage Friday that killed a U.S. contractor in northern Iraq. Iraq's Joint Operations Command says American airstrikes killed four militia fighters. Now to that attack at a Hanukkah celebration north of New York City. Police looking for answers after five people were stabbed by an intruder with a machete type knife. The suspect arrested hours later appeared in court today for the first time. ABC Stephanie Ramos has the latest. 
With his head down, wearing a white plastic jumpsuit, Grafton Thomas pleading not guilty Sunday morning to stabbing five people during a Hanukkah celebration at the home of a rabbi. Police say around 10 p.m. Saturday, the 38-year-old entered the home in Monsey, New York, which is right next door to the rabbi's synagogue. Several people were hurt, witnesses describing the horror. He took out his knife sword from a holder and started hitting people back and forth. Not, he didn't say anything. First, he went into the dining room and hit a few people there. And then he went to the kitchen, he hit one guy there, and then he came back to the dining room. Police say Thomas ran from the house and was later apprehended in Manhattan. Prosecutors say NYPD officers noticed blood on his clothing and smelled bleach. New York's governor, Andrew Cuomo, condemning the attack. These are terrorists in our country perpetrating terrorism on other Americans, and that's how we should treat it. The town of Muncie is still on edge. We were scared, but we, not, we were not surprised because this is not the first incident in New York. The suspect has no previous criminal history. Bond has been set at $5 million. Thomas is due in court again next Friday. Stephanie Ramos, ABC News, Muncie, New York. Stephanie, thank you. Police say members of a congregation shot and killed a man who opened fire in a church near Fort Worth, Texas. Police say a person shot by the suspect also died in the Sunday morning attack at the West Freeway Church of Christ in the town of White Settlement. A second parishioner has life-threatening injuries. An elder at the church told the New York Times that one of those killed was a security guard who responded to the shooter. Now to your Storm Team 6 forecast. It is a Storm Team 6 alert day. Meteorologist Todd Klassen in tonight, and rain is moving across the area. <laughs> you know, it's almost a repeat performance from last night into Sunday morning. We're doing it all over again now, Sunday night into your Monday morning here for the commute. And you can see the rain on Storm Team 6 radar right now, overspreading the area once again. Most of the rainfall right now, though, is fairly light here across the area. That's the good news. That, though, will be changing as the evening and eventually the early morning hours wear on. You see the rain spreading from south to north across the area. There's been some pretty good shower activity for much of the day in southern locations, but from Indianapolis to the north, we got a little bit of a break with just lots of clouds around. However, as we expand out, you notice that this is a pretty big storm system. The rain and snow extends all the way from New England and back through central Indiana, and then there's snow on the back side of this system, but the heaviest of the rain is still to our south, and that's going to be lifting to the north over the next few hours. So we'll go hour by hour by 10 and 11 o'clock tonight and into the midnight hour. Look at the heavy rainfall that's overspreading the area. Could be a rumble of thunder or two, but no severe weather. That's the good news. And the bulk of the steady rainfall will be out of here by about 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. And then we'll be just left with some rain and or snow showers. So temperatures will remain pretty mild throughout the overnight hours. But towards daybreak, that's when they start inching down back into the upper 30s. So as you may see a few snow showers, the biggest impact this would have on the morning commute would be reduced visibility in some area. We're not going to see any accumulation on the roadways. And as far as additional rainfall, this is on top of what we've already seen. Most of us probably pick up at least another inch, maybe even a little bit more heading into the overnight hours. So that could result in a little bit of ponding out there. The ground's completely saturated from the rain last night and also the snow that melted uh, last week. So just be aware of that if you're going to be out and about. But look at these high temperatures outside today. We got up in to the 60s in many locations right now as this rain is moving in. We've cooled off a little bit, 56 in Indy, as well as Kokomo, Bloomington, 56 degrees, and Muncie currently sitting at 60 degrees. But here is the change. While we've enjoyed a nice mild stretch of weather the past few days, this colder air will really start to work its way in throughout the course of uh, the day tomorrow. So this evening, just have the umbrella handy. Temperatures will hold pretty steady in the mid 50s for the day tomorrow. We are looking at temperatures that will only be in the 30s across the area. We'll have those rain and snow showers in the morning, but most of the afternoon we are just looking at what we'll call cloudy skies. And the wind will start to subside throughout the day, but it'll be up in the 20 mile per hour range throughout the day tomorrow. So it's going to be pretty chilly for us because it's so that 38 is going to feel probably more like the 20. So a big change from where we were, right, with temperatures in the 60s yesterday and today. So a little 
little bit of a shock to the system. Now, I want to fast forward to Tuesday. It's New Year's Eve. I want to point out if you're traveling, especially in northern locations for New Year's Eve, you may run into a little bit of some light accumulating snow. It's not out of the possible Tuesday morning that locations Lafayette, Peru, over towards Logansport, Kokomo, you could pick up a half an inch to maybe an inch of snow. It should not be an issue across southern locations. And as we ring in the new year, Tuesday night, at this point, it's just mostly cloudy with temperatures that will be hovering in the 30s across the area. So it's going to be a chilly New Year's Eve for us. And then looking forward in this forecast, New Year's Day, 42 degrees with sun and clouds. And then we're back up into the 50s as we head into Friday and Saturday and a little cooler on Sunday. So no more 60s here, Nicole. A little cooler for the next couple days, but 50s in December and then eventually January. Can't complain about that. I was going to say, many people heading back to work. It's going to be a cold yeah. and rainy Monday. Yeah, it will. Just bundle up tomorrow morning. It's going to be a chilly one. All right, Todd. Thank you. So, so many of us start our careers under the heavy burden of debt, but more companies are starting to embrace a new strategy by picking up the tab. Ancestry searches are more popular than ever, and so far the cost is pretty reasonable, but are you willing to pay more for info about your relatives? Wait before you answer, because we're talking a lot more. That's coming up. Visit TakeActionPV.com. Some companies are helping employees pay off debt. Could this be the future of doing business? Alicia Nieves went to find out how it helps both sides. My undergrad is in marketing. Um, I also got my master's, just a general MBA as well. I graduated with $110,000 in student debt. Um, <laughs> it's startling. 31-year-old Eliza Badeau left college paying as much towards student loans each month as rent in Boston. Making those payments was insane. But a few years after working at Fidelity Investments, the company announced it was rolling out a new workplace perk, student loan repayment assistance. Oh my gosh, it was overwhelming in a positive way. They asked if I would p help pilot it, and I said, absolutely. Where, why am I not going to do that, right? No strings attached, Fidelity was now paying nearly 20% of her roughly $1,000 a month student loan bill. In the beginning, it was something for me where I didn't see a future in buying a home. I didn't see a future in starting a family because I couldn't even fathom, you know, getting married, paying for a wedding, or having children. Um, with while battling this debt. So now it's something where that is an option for me. A growing number of companies are offering similar help in part because these employers are seeing it's actually benefiting them too. And what we've seen is that it's actually contributing to a reduction in turnover of over 70%. Asha Shrikantaya heads up the Fidelity Student Loan Debt Program. It's been so successful internally at increasing employee loyalty and productivity that the company has taken it external. We have an entire sort of benefits business around helping um, people all across the country with standing up employer sponsored benefits for student debt. Fidelity has helped almost a hundred other companies roll out some form of student loan assistance program. About 8% of companies across the country are now offering this new benefit. Over the next five years, that's expected to grow to 20%. And eventually, student loan repayment assistance could be as common of a workplace perk as 401ks. I think there will be no choice. Just seeing the wave of the generations coming in burdened by the student debt, you know, saving for retirement is a great benefit, but right up in there is, is dealing with your current debt. Well, digging into your roots of your family tree is about to become a lot more expensive. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services wants to increase fees by 500% for a number of applications and documents. That includes historical records of deceased immigrants who came to the U.S. between the late 19th and mid 20th centuries. A group of genealogists, historians, and advocates are organizing a public campaign to convince the agency not to hike the fees. But the USCI is saying that the fee increases are needed to cover operating and processing costs. The public comment period ends on December 30th. We'll be right back after this break with a final check of your forecast. Tristo. The beat goes on. Yeah. 
Local veterans and their family members will be getting some help staying warm this winter thanks to Indy West Harley Davidson. Employees and customers helped fill up boxes full of coats, hats, and gloves all of all sizes that will now be donated to HVAF of Indiana. The organization focuses on ending homelessness among veterans. Heather McGuire, the marketing manager with Indy West Harley Davidson, says they wanted to give back this holiday season, and when they found out about the need to help local veterans, they knew it was the perfect fit. It's not just for clothing. I know that they have a food bank as well. They also help with um, finding homes. So it's a, a great local non for profit that we wanted to support because myself along with my coworkers are also veterans. Well, after loading up the van full of coats, they took off riding to Checkered Flag Tavern for coat collection, raffles, and a donation ceremony. And Todd, it sounds like they're going to need those coats in the coming days. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's definitely going to get colder, and it's going to get pretty wet here across the area this evening and overnight. The rain continues into the overnight hours. Could be heavy at times. Another inch of rain is possible by tomorrow morning's commute. All right, Todd, thank you, and thank you for joining us. We'll see you right back here tonight at 11.